513 WMAZ Morning starts now. Looks like, I don't know. Words are hard. <laughs> Looks like the radar is clear for now. Visibility is very low due to the fog, but I'm going to look at your forecast coming up. A train wreck in Forsyth sends a man to the hospital. We tell you what the sheriff's office says happened. I'm going to be able to go into a profession that I finally have fallen, fallen in love with. I'm going to become a teacher. We tell you about the road to graduation for one Fort Valley student and how he is overcoming a serious injury. And one school is going above and beyond to give their students the power to set goals and work actively to achieve them. How they're doing it all in this week's School of the Week. Good Friday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 here on this December the 9th. Congratulations to you. You have made it to the end of the work and school week. And shout out to the folks who are going to be working this weekend. We appreciate you as well. Before you head out the door, I'm sure you're interested to know how the weather is looking. In Jordan, it's feeling a little warm, borderline hot. Yes, warm, <laughs> hot, humid, sticky, muggy. I got a whole list of words to go through. But yesterday we broke a record in terms of temperature. We, the record was 79 degrees back in 1966. And a viewer actually informed me that was 56 years ago and not 66 years ago. Math is hard too, but temperatures right now in Macon is 55 degrees. The radar is nice and clear in terms of the rain. Fog is out there though with the visibility down. Not nearly as distant as it was yesterday, so you should be good on the road ways today. We do have a stationary front to our north though. As you can see, it's really um, right along that rain boundary, keeping the rain out. But as the high pressure starts to weaken that rain, we'll start to seep on down into central Georgia. Still, temperatures are already in the upper 50s, lower 60s, 62 in Upper Scythe, 54 in Macon, 55 in Dublin, and 63 degrees down there in Vidalia. Dew point temperatures also in the mid to upper 50s, so humid out there. I'll be tracking the storms rolling in tonight, rain chances this weekend, and I'll talk about the cool weather moving in this week and your full forecast coming up. Thank you, George. New this morning, a Fort Valley State University student is getting ready to walk across the stage. This is a big deal for Trey Lawson because he was paralyzed from the waist down shortly after he graduated from high school. I got to catch up with Trey before he turns his tassel this weekend. Madison, put the markers up. It's just about time for winter break at K Road Elementary School in Peach County. Are they? Yes. yes. Right. As these students get ready for the last day before Christmas break, Student teacher Trey Lawson is preparing for his last day before he graduates. I'm going to be able to go into a profession that I finally have fallen, fallen in love with. I'm going to become a teacher. And it's just graduating from college is amazing. It's like no other feeling that you will ever have. The road to college graduation was anything but easy for Lawson after he got into a bad car accident in 2017. A car accident happened leaving from a track meet. I was with my friends and one of my friends fell asleep driving behind the wheel which resulted in paralyzed from the waist down where I broke my back. Lawson also got a brain injury and dealt with abdominal injuries as well. Through recovery, Lawson says the Shepherd Center helped him power through the good times and sometimes dark times. My body was probably torn up, but my mind was destroyed the most. So they helped me with mental therapy as well as physical therapy. By the fall of 2018, Lawson enrolled in Fort Valley State University and found a new sense of belonging. I feel like Fort Valley State helped me be the person that I was today, just from me going to that campus and still being able to open my eyes and meet people that treated me the same. In 2019, we shared this video of Lawson walking around a track that went viral on social media. This Saturday, Lawson is hoping to reach a new goal. I finally get to physically walk across the stage. It's just an amazing obstacle that I am truly proud to be accomplishing. That's right. Lawson plans on walking across the stage Saturday. It's a goal for the former track star who thought he lost it all but regained his strength. There's no mountain that is too tall and there is no valley that is too shallow for you to climb over and overcome things. K Road teachers have become family for Lawson and everyone speaks highly of him. He's just a phenomenal person to have in our building working with our boys and girls and he's a favorite of theirs. With Lawson closing this chapter of his life at Fort Valley State University, he is looking forward to helping the next generation and continuing to let everyone know that with hard work, you can get across any finish line. 
He has an absolutely great story and such a great spirit also. Trey plans to continue in the education field once he graduates this Saturday. Now, if you're planning to join family and friends for Fort Valley's Fall 2022 commencement ceremony, here's what you need to know. It's happening in the HPE complex. The in-person ceremony starts at 9.30 a.m. for both undergrad and graduate students. For parking during commencement, you should enter through the gate off of Ira Hicks Boulevard. There is no reserved parking. For additional details, visit the university's website. Here are some other graduations that are happening in Central Georgia this weekend. Georgia College in Milledgeville will award 326 students on Saturday at the Centennial Center. Doors open at 11 a.m. and the procession will begin at 12.45 p.m. About 260 undergraduates will be awarded their bachelor's in a variety of majors and 67 will receive their master's and specialist degrees. The Georgia Military College Old Capitol Guard Battalion will host its fall commissioning ceremony at the Goldstein Center for Performing Arts on the GMC campus. The commissioning is going to be happening on December the 15th at 3 p.m. Colonel Tom Torrance will be the guest speaker. And we celebrate tassels turning for students at Middle Georgia State University. Two commencement ceremonies took place on the Macon campus this week with the last one yesterday afternoon. Let's get you to some more education news happening here in Macon. Wesleyan College's new president raised, get this, $2.2 million in her first 100 days on the job. And Megan Blight said she's already putting the money to good use. Blight says donors gave anywhere from $5 all the way to six figures. She says the money is going towards international recruitment, different programs, fixing facilities, and scholarships. Fly says the money has energized the current Wesleyan students and it shows that donors are passionate about elevating women. We wanted to make sure that we have the resources for a long, prosperous future. Uh, and that's one of the things that I'm here to do is to uh, energize the place, create some new programs. Our community members are so behind us and behind our students and their success that they're able, they're willing to open up their wallets and, and support in that manner. Great work they're doing at Wesleyan. Blight says two of the programs being funded with the money right now is the Working Warriors program, which helps women affected by COVID-19. There's also the CEO Institute creating equal opportunities. It provides a personal advisory board that can help open doors to industry. It's 638 this morning. Crawford County Middle and High says it will have an increased law enforcement presence today. The school is working with investigators to look into a school shooting rumor. As of right now, Superintendent Christopher Ridley says they haven't found any evidence pointing to an actual threat. In a release, Ridley says, quote, our district takes the responsibility of the safety of our students and staff very seriously. Our goal is to be as transparent as possible where your children are involved. The release advises parents to call the school at 478-836-3126 with any questions or concerns. Again, that number, it's 478-836-3126. Moving over to Monroe County, Forsyth police say a 71 year old man suffered minor injuries when a train hit his car in downtown Forsyth. Police say it happened around 215 yesterday afternoon on Tiff College Drive. The man told officers that he never heard the train coming and couldn't see it because of the glare of the sun. The Forsyth man went to the hospital for treatment and the sheriff's office is investigating the wreck. This is the same crossing where a corrections officer was hurt back in 2018 when a train hit a van carrying several officers. The sheriff's office also reported a train hit another vehicle that same year. No one was hurt then. While Georgia Power is asking the State Public Service Commission, which regulates the power company, to approve a rate hike that could significantly bump up your power bill. If the commission approves the increase, customers would see the biggest jump next year. That's when Georgia Power predicts customers would see about a $14 increase each month. By 2025, it would climb to more than 16 bucks nearly $200 more each year compared to now. The price jumps have some watchdog groups worried. The State Public Service Commission will make its final decision on December the 20th. Georgia Power did send us a statement that reads, part, we will take our responsibility to plan, prepare, and make the investments needed to meet our customers' energy needs today, tomorrow, and for years to come seriously. And Georgia Power's request to the Georgia Public Service Commission outlines and supports that focus. It's Friday, and that means it's time for us to show you an A-plus school. That's our school of the week. Our morning reporter, TJ Anthony, is standing by to reveal that school to you. And 
We asked and listened. Some of you are sharing what you're celebrating this week. So Taylor Stephenson is going to have that for us. It's now 640. Jordan, some folks are celebrating this warm weather. Yes, and I'm celebrating that it's Friday, <laughs> so <laughs> take it or leave it. <laughs> but it is nice and warm outside and humid a little bit. We're seeing a downtown look into Macon right now. Temperature is sitting in the mid 50s, 54 there, 54 the dew point, making the humidity at 100%. Seeing a little fog out there across central Georgia. Very light. Looks like some parts of Eastman is seeing really heavy fog. But everywhere else seems to be, for the most part, pretty clear. If you are in those heavy and dense fog areas, just make sure you slow down. Make Make sure your low beams are on and you be careful out there because the roads are still wet because of all that fog. But in terms of rain, we are clear of that. Nothing there on the radar. We just have the stationary front to our north, keeping all that rain to the north. And there's high pressure down here to our south as it weakens. This stationary front could linger south. We're driving those storms downward toward our area. We can see that on our future view as we head towards 5 o'clock this afternoon. That rain is already affecting some of our northern counties. Lots of cloud cover overhead. Again, that's 5 o'clock moving into the overnight hours. This is now 3 a.m. On Saturday, lots of cloud cover. Still light rain chances in the summer type pattern. And we see that cloud cover over the next few days with rain chances embedded in it. Very light rain, nothing severe but still something to keep an eye out on. Have those rain jackets and umbrellas ready. That'll continue into Sunday where a widespread storm starts to make their way through at 11 o'clock Sunday night. So be careful with that. As we head into the next week, the next rain event will be into Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So again, have those rain jackets and umbrellas ready on Wednesday. This is the extended forecast kind of far out. If anything changes, as always, we will let you guys know. Here's a daily almanac. I keep mentioning that yesterday because it's pretty significant. We broke our record. Remember our record was set back in 1966, which was 56 years ago. Temperature high was 79 degrees, but yesterday that high was 83 degrees. We broke the record of 56 years. Not only that, but about four whole degrees, not just one or two, four degrees. So 83 is a high. We'll put that down in the record books for this day, or I guess it would have been yesterday in history. But temperatures are currently in the upper 50s, if not lower 60s across the board. 54 in Eastman, 59 in Gordon, 62 in Forsyth, and 64 degrees in Thomas. And dew point temperatures also a little bit higher than normal. So yeah, it's humid outside. I put that on the board here. Humid, clear morning overall, though. That's going to all change as we head into tonight as those storms start to really roll in. And we're going to see so we're going to see those overcast conditions as we head over the next couple of days. Speaking of which, we should dry out by at least on Tuesday after some rain moves in. And over the next seven days, those temperatures should slowly drop back down into the mid to upper 60s by Monday and Tuesday of next week.